I found the magic number for CPF contributions. You know, all my previous video, I shared about my CPF magic number for the CPF balances, right? And that did really well because I think that people really want to know how much balance is optimal for their own lives. And I think the other reason is because CPF makes the numbers really complicated and we don't know which numbers are the ones to chase for. So that magic number is a very useful and important video. And that's why I make a sequel to it. This time round, I will explore how much contributions is the optimal amount for each different situation. So whether you love or hate the CPF, at least you can know that these are the magic numbers for contributions. Then you can just optimize your own strategy such that you can put the least money or the most money into your CPF, be it your mandatory or your voluntary contributions. So let's go. The first magic number is $8,000 for tax relief. And this tax relief number would not matter whether it is in the RSTU, retirement sum top up, or your VCMA, voluntary contribution to your Medisafe. Because you know for retirement sum top up, it only goes into the special account. Whereas for VCMA, as the name suggests, it's really voluntary contribution to the MediSafe account. So they are going into two different accounts. And if you have watched my previous videos, I always said that going into the MediSafe account first is better because the amounts are not reserved in your CPF balance. And I remember before the CPF rules was changed effectively this year, the tax relief amount is quite different because for VCMA, they had a different limit. So now the limit is very simple for tax relief already. It's only $8,000 per year if you are doing like a self top up or self voluntary contribution to your own CPF balances. So if you actually top up or voluntary contribute to your MediSafe account above the 8,000 limit, not to say that it cannot be done, it can be done, just that above $8,000, the amount, the balance, the contribution we will not give you any additional tax relief. So be very careful on this magic number. And I know the CPF is really complicated with the numbers, right? But if you really want to know a good way to earn free money, then I'll refer you to the sponsor. I want to ask you one simple question. Do you believe in Tesla? Because you have missed the free Apple share, free Microsoft share, and even free Google share in the previous Weibo campaigns. But do you know that Weibo has upped their game again? And this time round, they are giving you $130 worth of Tesla shares. You heard that right, it's $130 worth of TSLA shares. That is the record high. What you need to do is to deposit at least 2000 Singapore dollars and make one buy order of US stock or ETF. Also, this time round, you have to complete an options trade so you can buy a put or a call option for the short term and at the same time maintaining your balance of 2000 SGD by not making any withdrawal orders for 30 days and you must be wondering why $130 right maybe it's related to the Tesla stock split recently from one stock into three stocks so hurry up and sign up for a Weibo account using my referral link down below but of course, if at this stage you still do not know how to start topping up or voluntary contribute to your MediSafe account, then you should refer to my most popular CPF video which I link up right here because I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of how you could top up your retirement sum to the SA or you can do your voluntary contribution to your MA. I'll do it all in this video. So check that video out after watching finish this video. The next magic number is $6,000 and this is actually the salary cap for CPF contributions for both the employer and the employee. So it's very relevant for those who are full-time employees because any salary above $6,000 is not subjected to CPF contributions or CPF deductions from yourself and your employer. So what I mean here is that for every $6,000 that you earn, 20% will come from you, right? Your self-contribution, the 20% will be deducted and your take-home pay will be 4.8K. And then your employer has to contribute 17% on $6,000, right? That will be 17% times $6,000, which is $1,020, okay? So that is the salary cap at $6,000. So what happens if you earn above $6,000? I think it's very simple. Even if you earn like $10,000 per month, $20,000 a month, only your first $6,000 will be subjected to CPF deductions and CPF employer contributions. So it's not like you earn $10,000, you have to take out $2,000, 20% own contribution, and then the employer give you $1,700, right? It's not so good deal. Lah. Otherwise, the employer also very can call, you know, need to give so much CPF to you. So remember the $6,000 magic number, that is the sell you want to optimize to hit as fast as possible because that is the max contribution that both yourself and your employer can give you CPF on. Above $6,000, 
sorry, not eligible for CPF anymore. You know, that could also be a motivation for people to earn higher above $6,000 because for people who hate CPF, uh, then at least they know that, okay, at least the government can only take the max out of $1,200 from me because 20% of $6,000 is $1,200, right? That's the max they can take out from you without you doing any kind of voluntary contributions, right? So for people to really hate CPF, then try to earn above $6,000 because even if you earn above ten k okay, you know the max they can take is only $1,200 from you. Next magic number is $37,740. Now this magic number is very precise, oh, up to the nearest $10. So why is it so precise? And you have to understand this CPF rule between ordinary wages and additional wages. Now your ordinary wages are like your base salary and your fixed monthly salary that comes with it, right? For example, you earn a fixed salary of $6,000 per month per your employment contract. And every month, regardless whether the company is doing well or not, it is contracted to pay you $6,000 per month. So that is your ordinary wage. And if you multiply that by 12, that is 12 times $6,000, which is $72,000 of ordinary wages per year. So let's be really clear on that. Huh? Ordinary wages means like your regular fixed monthly salary. That is not going to change. Then the other component will be like your additional wages. Additional wages are like your bonus, your annual bonus, your performance bonus, your annual wage supplement. All this will come under additional wages because it's really fluctuating. It's not like every year you get the same amount, right? So let's say your company is really generous and they give you like five months of combined bonus and AWS in your additional wages, which means five months of salary. That is five times six thousand dollars, which is 30k, right? So that is 30k of additional wages plus 72k of ordinary wages total wages will be hundred and two thousand dollars and if you use the cpf employer and employee contribution limit of 37 percent whereby 20 percent is from yourself and 17 percent is from your employer combined that will be 37 percent right then use 37 percent multiplied by hundred and two thousand dollars what is the number you get 37 thousand $740. This will also be the annual CPF contribution limit. So if you're doing voluntary contributions, you cannot go above the $37,740. And what that means is that if you're earning this level of 102 k of salary, you cannot do any voluntary contributions to your three accounts anymore. Because you remember, your normal employment already hit the $37,740. So you can no longer do this kind of voluntary contributions. All this, even if you do it in the beginning of the year, when you're your normal contributions have come in and you overflow that amount, it will be returned back to you from the CPF board at zero interest. So it's not worth to do it anyway. But the annual CPF limit of 37740 does not apply to your retirement sum top up. Because if you do your retirement sum top up of $8,000, it's a separate limit from the CPF annual contribution limit. So you can still do your RSTU if your special account has not reached the full retirement sum yet. Now for reference for the video, the current 2022 FRS amount is 192000 so saying that if your special account has not reached 192,000, even if you are earning an ordinary wage plus additional wage of 102k, then you get 37.74k, right? You will still be eligible for the tax relief under RSTU. But you know, the real calculation of eligible ordinary wages plus additional wages is quite complicated. That's why I'll refer you to this PDF file submitted by CPF, which you all can take a look at different examples of what is the ordinary wage limit or the additional wage limit that is eligible for CPF. I think they provide very very nice examples for each different situations. For those people who may be interested in calculating your ordinary wage or your additional wage based on how much you yourself or the company is going to contribute on your CPF. Okay, so just now I have described the $37,740 magic number, but that is only for full-time employees, right? How about if you are self-employed? That means you're paying your own salary, you're a freelancer, you don't work for a company, everything is really on yourself. Then firstly, you have to understand a little bit of how self-employed people are taxed because they are taxed on the net trade income. Net trade income is the equation of your revenue minus your business expenses, then the net trade income will be taxable. And for self-employed people, it's really optional for you to top up your CPF, just that it's mandatory for the 8% MediSafe contribution that you have to give as a self-employed. So the other 29% for your OA and SA is really optional. But I felt that you should really do it because the great thing about being self-employed is that your voluntary contributions to your three accounts as a self-employed is eligible for tax relief. And that is great news, right? But of course, that comes with a limit as well, which is the $37,740. How to calculate that? 
side is that your max net trade income is 102,000 as well. Then you take 37% multiplied by 102,000. That is the max annual CPF contribution that you can give as a self-employed. So you are the same as a full-time employee, just that you, it's really optional for you to go and voluntarily contribute to your Medisafe as a self-employed. Only the Medisafe 8% is compulsory. Uh. The rest of the 29% is not compulsory. And since you're a self-employed person, there's really no differentiation between whether you're ordinary wage or ordinary wage, right? Every income that you get is your wage. So there's really no distinction on the OW and AW definition. So I would say if you're a self-employed, really make use of the tax relief benefits given as a self-employed. Okay, don't under-declare your income. That is against the law. And you can get 37% of your net trade income for tax relief to your voluntary contributions to a trade account. So these are the few magic numbers for CPF contributions that you may not know of. But what if you really want to learn of the CPF account balances, their magic number, then you can take a look at this previous video right here because it will show you what is the real magic number that you should strive to achieve.